Welcome to this uh, spiritual gathering. My name is Shiva Akula. I'm an infectious disease doctor. And I've seen the death and destruction from COVID-19 with my patients, as well as my near and dear family members. There is a limitation to the medical treatment. Then there is an extensive opportunity and the service of the pastoral care where they can actually supplement the spiritual uh, support, spiritual care, and help the religious needs. And that's the pastoral care professionals that we are celebrating today. <clears throat> I'm actually excited that we have people zoomed in from all over. And we have some more people waiting, but we're going to go ahead and get started. What I would like to do is... Uh, have a brief introduction, which would be a single line. And uh, I would go ahead and stop it. And I would go ahead and uh, let you guys start. And then I would request you no know, five minutes. And like I said earlier, that I'm going to promise to do a, a podcast of your life, your mission, and also a YouTube presentation, and we'll submit that to the National Library of Congress. So you'll get that later on. So I want you all to know, be very brief in the, in the introduction and uh, let's get to the substance. So, and I promise uh, that we will do that, uh, hopefully in, in a reasonable one hour completion. So let's begin the celebration. Craig Ladner, Cannon Hospice, Gulfport, Mississippi. Greg Ladner, Cannon Hospice, Gulf Fort, Mississippi. Thank you, Dr. Kula. This morning, we, today we're celebrating Pastor Appreciation Day. And this morning, we invited several uh, pastors to, to join us. Greg, you know, your audio is Dave, off. Dave, Dave. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, today we're celebrating Pastor Appreciation Day. We invited uh, several pastors to join us for a brunch this morning in appreciation. So today we celebrate Pastor Appreciation Day. It's just a simple thank you but to all pastors, to all leaders, for the sacrifices, for the commitment, for the loyalty, for their servanthood, and for the love of God and for the love of people. So today is all about expressing our thankfulness to you, pastors, leaders, and we want you to know that you are appreciated. So today's a special day for all leaders simply for appreciation. My journey in hospice began four and a half years ago. It started basically just volunteering in a personal care home. And then a door opened for me that a really only guy can open. And that door was to become a chaplain for Cannon Hospice here in Gulfport, Mississippi, which truly has been a tremendous blessing for me. And along the way, I have met a lot of families and friends along that journey. And I just want to say that I'm so proud to be part of the family of Cannon Hospice. So today was a success with approximately 20 pastors that were here. Uh, unfortunately, a lot, some did have to leave because they had other obligations. But there are still some here that are listening today. So Dr. Kula, thank you. Thank you to the family of Canon. And now I'm going to go into a word of prayer. But just know that leaders and pastors, that you are so appreciated. And thank you for all that you do. For God, thank you for all that you do for our patients, for our families, and for all. So let us pray. Lord, today we celebrate a special day for all pastors, for all leaders, clergy who are, who has been called 
to fulfill an important assignment, an important duty to take care of the sick, to watch over the poor, to simply minister to those who are in need. We know that many times there are family members, there are actually patients who have no family. So God, today we thank you that you allow us to be their family and become their family, to become their support. So Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you allow us to do. We ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to move, that you will continue to nourish us in your love, that you will continue to just allow us to be part of your assignments. Lord, simply thank you. Thank you for being part of this great calling. Lord, we lift up our family, the families, our, the patients that come into our care, that you will comfort them, that we, you would give them peace, that your Holy Spirit would just meet with them, and that you would continue to supply their needs. And Lord, for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one today, Lord, may you comfort them. May through their grief, that they will find peace. Thank you for this celebration today. Thank you for everyone that's going to be part of this prayer time today. And today we give you honor and we give you glory for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Earl Hodges, Cannon Hospice, New Orleans, Louisiana. Earl Hodges, Cannon Hospice, New Orleans, Louisiana. We are actually waiting on Earl Hodges. He's on mute. He's on mute. Okay. 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 He's, he's there now. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, thank you, Dr. Cooler. In the Old Testament, the prophet Nehemiah was given the task, the formidable task of rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. He was facing some very, very difficult obstacles. And he prayed this prayer. Father, strengthen my hands and indeed father today as i pray i pray father strengthen our hands as we do this work strengthen our hands and give us the courage and the strength as we provide care to those who are hurting to those who are sick to those who are dying and i pray for all those father who do this work i pray father you will strengthen our hands and father i pray for those who are in the, the labs, the scientists who are working to, to find a vaccine for, for this COVID uh, virus, Father, I pray for them, Father. I pray you'll strengthen their hands, Father. I pray you'll give them special divine wisdom, Father. And Father, I pray for Dr. Kula as he leads us. And Father, I pray once again now for all those who are on this, in this prayer meeting today. I pray for their encouragement and their strength. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Demetria Johnson, Cannon Hospice in New Orleans, Louisiana. Demetria Johnson, Cannon Hospice. Good morning. God's word says that in all things that we are to give thanks. But what I am most thankful for today as we come together to appreciate the interfaith community is that I work for a company and thank you, Dr. Akula, that at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, he gives us the opportunity to shut it down and come together as a Canon family and pray. If you would indulge me for just a second and close your eyes, and imagine a world that if the entire world come together at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time and pray, what would that look like? Father, we thank you today, God, and we praise you because you are such an awesome God. 
we thank you for this day that you have set aside for us to come together and share the love of Christ, because that's what the world needs today, love, love, more love. And as I lift up each participant that's represented today on this call, God, I pray that you would continue to give us grace for the journey that you have called us to. Because your word said that we didn't choose this assignment, but you chose us that we can do great work in this world. So Father, as we continue to walk this walk of faith, that you would continue to be with us, guide us in all that we do. Today, we say we give you honor, we give you glory for being such an awesome and a mighty God. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Uh, we're looking for Mary Beth Ellis, but I guess we're gonna go on. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Shamsuddin Masjid Omar Harvey, Louisiana. Shamsuddin Masjid Omar Harvey, Louisiana. Hello, everybody could hear me? Everybody yeah. could hear me? Yes. You could hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay, I'd like to just begin with all praise and glory due to Allah most gracious. And peace and blessings be upon his prophet. What I want to say, I know I only have five minutes, uh, is that this congregation is very dear to me. And I want to thank Dr. Akula and some other people that assist me in informing me, you know, of this. Um, I had a personal experience with, uh, with a health situation. Uh, actually, all my life, I've had heart disease. I've had a tetralogy of lower heart disease. And uh, as I get older, it gets worse. And uh, in November of last year, I had got very, it had gotten very severe for me because I had gotten pneumonia. And it was difficult for my heart to handle it. And then uh, I came through that by the grace of Allah. And then in uh, February, I got the uh, corona. <laughs> you know, it was like back to back for me because by the time I healed and from November up until uh, January, then I had gotten sick again in February, you know, with, with, with the corona. But by the grace of God, I had gotten through it. And what I want to share is that I myself had followed what the Prophet Muhammad had instructed. No, and it's in the Quran, where the Quran says that Allah or God comes down to the lower heaven in the middle of the night and he asks who wants to be forgiven or who wants anything that he would offer it. And uh, I had woke up one night when I was going through this severe sickness and I asked him uh, to cure me. And I asked him, uh, to make my life better. And within about three or four days, I know medicine played a part of it. The prayers from other people played a part of it. But the ultimate uh, part that was constructed was from God himself. You know, and for that, I am very grateful. You know, so I would like to share that with you all is that when you wake up, wake up in the middle of the night as Allah says in his Quran, you know, uh, for anyone that want anything from him, uh, they could uh, they could ask for it. You know, and then the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fully to mount," which means that every soul must taste death, and we have to understand, you know, what death is. You know, because according to the Islamic faith. Uh, it's just a temporary uh, separation between body and soul. 
you know, and the interesting thing is that the soul goes back in the body once you get buried, you know, uh, and we have to wait until the day of judgment, you know, in order for uh, that soul to be restored, you know, and on that particular day, God would make an account of everything that we have done, you know, and uh, it is us that needs to praise him and glorify him in this world you know, so that we could be saved when we be raised up uh, for the day of judgment. Without going too much time, I know I only have five minutes. Uh, I would just like to end with one of the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, you know, and he has said that uh, a person uh, encounters uh, three things after death that, that, that they could actually benefit from after death you know, that they could benefit from. One is a child that actually prays for him, prays for the parent. The other is the charity that you leave behind, you know, the things that you have done for other people. And the last one is, the, uh, is in the knowledge that you left behind, whether you taught somebody, whether you wrote a book, or whether you instructed anyone to do any sort of righteousness, you know, and they go back and think about that. You know, and we hear a lot of people who say, my father used to say, my grandmother used to say, you know, and they get benefits from that. So that's how we benefit, you know, after we die. So may God forgive us all and have mercy on us and guide us and protect us. I mean. All right. Thank you. Mary Beth Ellis, Unity of New Orleans Spiritual Center, New Orleans. Mary Beth Ellis, Unity of New Orleans Spiritual Center, New Orleans, Louisiana. Mary Beth, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate very we much. I still can't hear you. Uh, you can't hear me? Yes, yes, now we can hear you. Now you can hear? You can hear? Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate being on here and sharing with you a little bit about the um, Buddhist point of view. Um, and actually that's very simple in terms of what we're going through right now with all the the issues and politics and the pandemic and, and just so many things that are going on and the healing that's needed. And it, it, the Buddhist just kind of says it all in the most important part of Buddhism, which is the Four Noble uh, Truths, which is the first thing that Buddha taught when he became enlightened. And the Four Noble Truths are that life is suffering think we all are suffering a lot now and the second noble truth is there's an um there's a reason for the suffering there's suffering life is suffering there's a cause of it and the third noble truth is there's an end to it and the fourth noble truth is the eightfold path which is right aim right speech right livelihood uh right effort all the rights and the answers are right there in the Four Noble Truths because we know from the First Noble Truth we're all suffering. I think we all agree on that right now. But the Second Noble Truth that there is a cause of suffering, the Buddhists believe the cause of suffering is our thinking, the way we look at things. And the Third Noble Truth, the end of suffering, is to change our thinking. And that's the whole thing right there. I think if we could look at things a little bit differently, um, the Buddhists say that we wouldn't suffer anymore. Of course, the most important thing is to realize we're suffering and face it and not try to escape it. So many people try to escape it these days, but just face it square on. Yes, we're suffering. We've got some problems, but the cause of suffering, if it's our thinking, the end of suffering is to change our thinking and that's the way we look at things. I mean, we've got a lot to deal with now, but when we really look at it in perspective, we have a lot to be grateful for too, because it was just a few hundred years ago that 
Uh, instead of people arguing about politics, for example, or arguing about whether the pandemic is real or not, villages were marauding each other on a daily basis and massacring each other and stealing their land and their children and the, everything they owned and killing most of them. Um, and not to mention just a few hundred years ago, the, the plague, the Black Plague was wiping out a third to a half of Europe and other places around the world on a regular basis. So we have a lot to be grateful for. Things really have not ever been better in a lot of ways. So if we could come back and realize what we have to be grateful for, it could help us change our thinking where, yes, we've got some problems and we suffer because of them. We lose people we love, for example. Maybe we don't get along with people because of political differences, people we love. But if we could look at the good parts too, the pandemic has brought people together in a way that we've never been together before. It's united whole countries, for example. So just back to the basics, because I don't have much time, but just realize the four noble truths of Buddhism. Yes, we suffer, first noble truth. Secondly, the cause of suffering is always us. It's always the way we look at things. And the third noble truth is there's an end to suffering and that is to change the way we look at things, to join with other people like we're doing today and try to get a higher understanding of things and to see it from a different perspective and to find something to be grateful for about it. We are at a time where we're inventing cures for pandemics and people can get along better together. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. The Buddhist, Buddhism is pure psychology. And so that's what it's about is healing through healing our minds. It's up to us. Thank you so much. All right, the next speaker is Rhonda Futaro, West Jeff Medical Center, Morero, Louisiana. Rhonda Futaro, West Jeff Medical Center, Morero, Louisiana. Rhonda, you need to unmute. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. I um, wanted to share with you a couple of verses of scripture, one from the book of Joshua and one from the book of Hebrews, and then have a, a brief prayer. Um, from the book of Hebrews in the 10th chapter, it tells us, let us hold fast to the faith we profess without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good works. For we are not among those who shrink back and thus are lost, but among those who have faith and thus are saved. And from the first chapter of Joshua, no one shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let us pray. Gracious God, this has been a hard year so far, filled with natural disasters and unrest and dealing with a pandemic as we try to live our lives with integrity and live in community. Yet we know you have walked with each person through this difficult journey of 2020. Whatever we've faced and whatever we continue to face, you have been our strength given us courage in the face of danger, peace in the midst of chaos, and wisdom in the midst of the confusion around us and within us. Thank you. Thank you for your continual presence, love, and grace towards us all. When our hearts are weary and discouraged, help us to remember your promises and your presence. 
We thank you that your integrity never wavers, that your love never fails, and that you always keep your promises. Particularly during this season of incredible stress and uncertainty, may we take the time each day to remind ourselves of your promises as well as the specific ways you've been faithful to us individually and corporately. Help us to remember that you are with us, providing for us and strengthening each person every step of this journey. We thank you for all those healthcare workers and first responders who have been on the front lines of this battle against COVID-19. Bless them and their loved ones, giving them strength for this journey. We pray for those who mourn during this season, that you would comfort them. And for those who are ill, especially with the COVID-19 virus, that you would bring healing to them. May your peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Krishnamurti Joyce, Srinimurti McLean, Virginia. Krishnamurti Joyce, Srinimurti McLean, Virginia. Please unmute yourself before you speak. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Just a very short introduction. Uh, Namaste, My name is Krishnamurti Joyce. I'm the president of uh, Trini Murthy um, Incorporation. It's a religious organization. Um, I'm a retired veterinarian. Um, animal, veterinarian means the animal doctor. And I served USDA for about 35 years. And I live in Washington, D.C. Uh, with a wife and three kids. Um, I also a religious person. Um, I worked for three temples as a priest for the last 25 years. So um, the religious part comes from my grandfather who was a priest in India. So with that uh, little bit of introduction, I'd like to start this uh, topic. The topic of uh, my topic today is uh, death and healing. So I'm focusing my um, speech just on death and healing. But before going to uh, the death and healing discussion, the important situation is, or important uh, activity that's going on now is about the uh, pandemic of uh, COVID-19. So in, I have searched the, um, our Vedas and um, Upanishads, and in that, I found a, a sukta, which is specifically to kill the virus. Uh, this is called um, Krimi Nashaka uh, Sukta. This is a kind of a, a by uh, Jamadagni Rishi and others. It comes in uh, Tarvavarna Veda. You know, Vedas, there are four Vedas and uh, Tarvavarna Veda is one of them. And uh, also, it is part of the Taitriya Aranyika. So, uh, please let me uh, recite this Krimina uh, Shakasukta so that it will kill the COVID 19 from this world. Krinatva Krime Hanmi Kanme Najamadagnina Vishwaso Brahmana Hataha Meenagaraja Apyeshagaswati Pirahataha Ato Mato Pika Ato Sura Ato Krudra Ato Krishna Ato Shrita Ato Ashatika Hataha Shita Bisaha Sarve Hataha. So, just in the meaning of this shloka, it says that whoever listens to this shloka 
any creamy or any bacteria or virus that surrounding them get destroyed. So basically, it's a <clears throat> creamy natural soup. So with that, I'd like to talk about now on a couple of things with the death and healing. So death, it is the ultimate truth. Everybody knows, most people realize and some people don't realize when you are born, death is behind you. So that is the ultimate, ultimate truth for all living beings, with death. So when death happens, it is uh, a loss for the close family people and they mourn. <clears throat> but one has to learn how to handle the death. So this is called the healing process. But before um, the healing process does not start after death, it starts way behind or way before the death. What I mean by that is one needs to talk about death and understand the death. So when we talk more about the death, they will be ease and then be ready to face the death. What I mean by that is in some society, um, in some culture, they don't talk about death because it's bad moment. But in some society, they very openly talk about it. So what I'm advocating here is talk about death openly, discuss with it discuss with the family and friends and everything so you are more open and bold to face the death. Because a lot of people, when you hear the word death, they are panicky. They risky. So it is very important to discuss about death before you prepare yourself. The other thing is they're all official, like uh, any documentation that needs to be done, doing the will, and uh, making sure that who won't know how you had to be criminal or whatever after death. These things has to be clearly let the family people know. So this is very important because if people go in Roma, you have a of questions or problems to the people who are living with you. And then, <clears throat> so your death process becomes very easy. Make sure that somebody is identified or your family members access to, uh, to do the final rites. It is called, in Sanskrit, it is called untasty. Make sure somebody is there or taking care of that untasty program. Because when a person has lived long, he has given productive and given a lot of things to the society, you want to make sure he is sent off to the other world with the proper rituals. So make sure your untasty is done properly. So these are preparations when you are still alive, and after that is done, or when you are passed, <clears throat> make sure that certain things are done. Number one, untasty is done. Number two, your people are aware of all the things that you want to be done. And the third thing is, <clears throat> here where the family comes, the family is mourning. They're very sad. So this is a part how you have to handle it and get the healing. First of all, if you look into the Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita, it very clearly says when a death happens, the death is only for the body. The body is made up of blood, bone, and flesh. There is no death for the Atma. So when you look at a person, there is two things that is important the body and the Atma. So there is no death for Atma, so there is no mourning, there is no sadness. The way you have to think is, when a person dies, his body is dead, and the Atma goes to a better place. He goes to heaven, or he goes to another person, and he becomes a better place. That is how you have to think. Even in Bhagavad Gita and in Upanishads, they very clearly say, the death is only for body and not for the Atma. Atma cannot die. Atma cannot be born or touch. Atma cannot be felt. But it is an entity which is very part of every human being. So this is very important to understand for the person who is passing by. And then, the, uh, one, another thing, when a person passes away, 
the relatives and friends don't have to mourn because the person has gone to a better place. And the, in our scriptures, Kunti, the Parnavas mother, and also the Apostle Dushatra's wife, they all say that don't cry for the person who left because crying is forbidden when a person dies because the person is going to a better place. So um, these are all the important things one has to follow to heal the sadness of a loved one or a loved one has departed from them. Most important thing is one has to be strong, one has to accept the death, one has to keep going further. There is a mourning period do, during which you can glorify the things that the person has done at the morning time, you need to go into your normal life, face the normal life, and be strong enough. You cannot lose your heart. You have to be strong enough to face the world after one of your beloved people has passed away. This is very important right now because of endemic situation. There are many deaths and many families needs to be healed. The healing process is very important so that they can become the normal uh, life activities. So this is my message to the uh, world. Please be strong. Please face the death with the strong determination and accept it as it is part of the life. Nobody can avoid a death. All we can do is handle it and face it and be strong enough to come back to the normal activities. So this is my few words about healing and death. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm very happy that this is happening throughout the world and the United States. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Siri Bahadur Khalsa, Sikh Dharma International, Bastrop, Texas. Siri Bahadur Khalsa, Sikh Dharma International, Bastrop, Texas. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be a part of this congregation uh, this, after, this morning. Um, yeah, I practice the, the Sikh path and I'm a yogi. So um, I, I've studied uh, different paths uh, throughout my life and, and I just managed to see a, what a lot have in common. <clears throat> and so the Sikh, the Sikh way of, of worship and the Sikh way of uh, assigning uh, uh, a relationship of, of the individual to the divine is just realizing that everything is the divine, the manifestation. And everything that comes into the life comes by that grace. And so what I would like to do is, uh, since we serve people, and it's, it's mostly up to us to, to be centered and be strong when other people are, are needing our assistance, is just have a, a, a short experience of, of how a yogi might pray. And I'm inviting you to join with me if you would. It's very short. But first, if you are just to stretch and move your body all kinds of ways, and you don't have to do this, you can if you want, and there's no, you know, there's nothing to it. What we want to do is just move energy in the body, right? You just move a little bit and let your body feel like it's awake. The next thing, so you have movement. For the yogi, the effectiveness of prayer comes from breath, stillness, and creating a sound, creating an intention. So um, one last movement before we come to stillness is you just take your palms of your hands and rub them together briskly, lightly, and you'll feel a bit of heat generated between the hands. And this is just to demonstrate the electromagnetic nature of energy and the cosmos at work. Palms rub together. Now, after rubbing the palms, if you take them and just move them close together, further away, closer together, further away, you'll feel a magnetic pulse between the palms, right? And just very, very slightly. And there's a space in there where you can feel 
energy moving, receptive and projective energies of the body. So then the hands come together and place them at the heart or let your hands just rest on your lap, palms up. And now just breathe deeply and let your body become still. And from the point of your consciousness, let your mind also become still. Just listen, feel your body, feel its sensations. And as you become still, the body will stop sending sensory messages and you'll feel an uh, under sensations, below the surface sensations of pulsing life. And in this space to get beyond mind and beyond body is where the realm of uh, connection to the divine takes place. So just breathe, nice deep breath, inhale, exhale. And with each exhale, allow your body to relax. With each inhale, feel life force coming into you. Actually the divine manifesting through us by the grace of the breath. And underneath, as the mind becomes a little still, and as the body becomes still, You'll feel the pulse, maybe in the palms of the hands, maybe in the temples, maybe at the heart. And so now to come into the heart and find the strength of the heart's connection with the soul and the soul's connection with the creator, let the hands rest. Left hand against the heart, the right hand on top, and again, breathe. And at this point in the stillness, feel yourself, body still, mind still, and yourself becoming very vast. With each exhale, relax, relax your pain, relax any fears, cares, worries. And in this space, you find your connection with the beloved of your soul, whether it be the Buddhist tradition, the Islam tradition, the Christian tradition, the Hindu tradition, anything, what you think, and where you direct your energy and your spiritual practice is what dominates your environment. And so now, beloved divine creator of life, come into each heart with your grace, with your peace and your power. Let each one direct their prayers, their attention and their thanksgiving towards you. And let us take that thanksgiving and the grace that you give us and pour it out to all those in need, all those, those who come to us for love, support, and peace. Satnam, blessings. Shama Mehta, Beaumont Health, Dearborn, Michigan. Shama Mehta, Beaumont Health, Dearborn, Michigan. Namaste, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to this interfaith prayer meet. As mentioned, I'm Shama Mehta. I'm a board certified chaplain working at Beaumont Health in Dearborn, Michigan. Um, as chaplains, we are called to walk with those who we serve in their joys, but also their sorrows, in their darkness, and their toughest times. We are trained to look for connection, meaning, belonging, and divine intervention. As we continue to work and serve through this pandemic, I would like to share a phrase from Hindu scripture, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. It means that the world is like one family. There are no others. We are all united by invisible bonds. And now I offer prayer that is a combination of multiple different verses from the Hindu scripture. Om, may there be well-being in of all beings in the multiverse. May all those who are motivated by enmity find their way to peace and wholeness. May all people try, truly focus their thoughts on the holistic welfare of all living beings. May our minds find compassionate tranquility. And without any exertion, may our thoughts be settled in that oneness which is beyond our perception. May all be happy, may all be free from illness, may all see that which is auspicious, may no one suffer. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May there be peace in me, peace in you, and peace in the multiverse. Namaste. Okay. Yehuda 
Stolov Interfaith Encounter Association Israel. Yehuda Stolov Interfaith Encounter Association Israel. Hello everyone, good evening from Jerusalem. Thank you very much for letting me be with you this evening for me, this morning for you. Um, I would like to share with you um, uh, not a prayer, maybe a kind of a prayer through action. Um, the way we at the Interface Encounter Association use the power of uh, religion as, uh, as a, a way to build bridges and heal the relations between the communities in the Holy Land. The Interface As Encounter Association started uh, 19 years ago um, and is working on the grassroots level to create uh, interfaces between neighboring communities through groups that meet uh, regularly. Um, and when they meet, they talk about their faith and their religious traditions and the way they practice them or some of them not practice them. Um, this uh, angle, especially in our part of the world, uh, allows us to go, to stay away from politics and at the same time deal with something that is very dear to people, that has very uh, strong existential value for people. So it takes the conversation to a deeper level. It allows people to discover similarities between them and maybe more, more important, it uh, enables them to talk about differences in a constructive way. So people train themselves to develop friendships with people they disagree with, which is the real challenge that we are facing here. Uh, until now, we established 108 groups. Uh, right now, uh, 44 of them are active. Um, all of them in different parts of the Holy Land. In the recent years, we have also a few groups outside of the Holy Land, three in the US, one in Kenya. Um, maybe it's worth mentioning that two of these groups are uh, more focused on health issues. One of them is a group that trains uh, 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 nursing students in cultural competence, and the other one is a group of uh, midwives. Um, during the corona pandemic, we were working hard to maintain activity to uh, allow to uh, encourage groups to, to meet uh, online where possible, uh, to keep uh, and encourage and support uh, people from other groups. Um, we also established some uh, uh, online encounters that were open for all and uh, enabled people to join from all over the world. Um, we also organized a few occasions of prayers for help for the humanity. Um, I invite all of you to join. Uh, I will maybe send uh, by the chat the, uh, our website and my email address. You're all welcome to join. Um, and uh, I think uh, I will end here with a, with a, a short prayer. Um, in Hebrew, uh, from the Jewish tradition, uh, and maybe ho we, may we all uh, get out of this uh, stressing uh, period stronger and healthier. All right, Natalie Kaharik. Art of Living, Austin, Texas. Natalie Kaharik, Art of Living, Austin, Texas. Hi, Shiva, good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm Natalie, I'm joining from Texas. Um, my spiritual teacher, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, says that prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening to God and that both are important, like standing on two legs. It's nice to have that time to sit and pause and reflect. So I've known Shiva for a number of years. We've occasionally meditated together and I'm honored to be here. Um, I'm just going to recite a prayer that um, I learned in India a long time ago and then translate it. And hope that that touches you today. It's been wonderful to be a part of something that just shows how much respect there is amongst traditions and to cultivate that feeling of peace within all of us. 
Sahanavavatu, Sahano Hunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahe, Tejas Bani Navas Namastu, Madrid Vishavahe, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. May God protect both teacher and student. May He nourish us together. May we work together with great energy. May our studies be enlightening. May there be no hate among us. May peace, peace, peace prevail on the world. Katrina Czech, Unity of New Orleans Spiritual Center, Louisiana. Katrina Czech, Unity of New Orleans Spiritual Center, Louisiana. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Let's gather together in a short meditation to commune with the divine within and to connect with the wholeness that is inherent within each one of us. So I invite you now to just close your eyes and allow your awareness to turn inwards. Allow your body and mind to become still. And I invite you to just remember what an amazing miracle we are at this time. Our bodies, our hearts, and our minds. And let us give thanks for that power that keeps our hearts beating, that keeps us breathing. For we are all walking miracles, all of us. So we turn our attention now to the power of healing that one mind and that one heart that moves through us to align. Whatever has fallen out of alignment, we know right now that there is a healing power that is alive everywhere in this world, that our very nature is wholeness. The process of aligning with spirit is to reconnect ourselves with the truth of our being, which is wholeness. So let us affirm that connection right now, that in this moment, I am aligned with the power and the wisdom, a healer beyond my wildest dreams. So I surrender any sense of dis-ease to that healer. I affirm that same truth for anyone and everyone. There is a divine healer alive and each cell of our bodies right now is corresponding with this intelligence. It responds to our thinking, responds to our feelings, responds to our love. I invite you to bring into your awareness right now any place in your being, be it physical or emotional or mental, where you seek healing Bring your attention there now and bring your heart there now and then send love to this place. And as you send your love, let go of any fear in this moment, any sense of disconnection, any sense of dis-ease. We turn from that and we affirm that the healing love of pure spirit is alive in every cell, every organ, every bone, and every tissue. That divine spirit is alive within you. So let us accept the healing powers of the very nature of who we are and affirm that divine love is washing over us right now, washing us clean of any fear any sense of disconnection. And as we open to this healing power, anything that may have been in the way, all fear, any diagnosis or any information that does not support your healing, we turn from that now and turn towards the source of all good Turn towards that divine power that is always available to us. And right now, as we open our hearts to it, we say yes. And whatever that situation, whatever that condition may be, know this. 
There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing that cannot be healed. And we open to that divine wisdom, that divine presence that is with us always. And we allow it to have its way with us. So I invite you right now to bring into your mind's eye yourself, your body and your being and see it as completely well and completely connected to that one power. Experience what that feels like. All is well. And so let us give thanks for that divine healer that is alive in us now. Let us give thanks for all the gifts and all the mysterious ways that that healer shows up to move us to where we need to be right now. Let us accept this very truth in the core of our being, our wholeness. This includes all things, all situations, and all conditions. I accept my healing. I release my worries into a law that cannot fail. And I accept the gifts. I accept the healing. And I walk forward with confidence. And so it is. Namaste. Shiva, you're muted. Kate Becker, Therapeutic Breathwork, New Orleans, Louisiana. Kate Becker, Therapeutic Breathwork, New Orleans, Louisiana. Hello, everybody. All of your beautiful words and dedications and ways of entering and participating on the path of spirit or God have touched me today. And in closing, as we can take this moment of togetherness to recognize that our strength as a community of spiritual leaders exceeds the sum of our parts, the bravery of openness, the bravery of seeing difference, diversity, newness, foreignness even, through the eyes of interest, cherishing what resonates with the heart. Speaking of resonating with the heart, well, here's some sounds now that help us to come into the vibration of our heart and our belly in a way so that we can ground, not singularly, but ground and gel together. You might Gently close your eyes, or you might even gaze at the faces of the beings before you. One of the most significant and beautiful aspects of our spiritual journey, whatever it may look like, is that the devotional self returns to innocence so profoundly that nothing can harm disrupt, sh shatter or break the knowledge of our divinity and our oneness. This collective power to be brave, to be unified by love and to embrace our differences will spread like wildfire to the hungry and thirsty, fearful minds of those seeking spiritual guidance, those who arrive on the doorstep of any practice, wanting help, wanting love and to be seen, wanting guidance, 
and wanting to know the truth within them. May we melt down for love of each other to the very innocence of that divine. May we support each other to thrive beyond our imagination, to be powerful, potent, peaceful advocates for love in the most radiant way that we can be of service to that which is divine on this planet. Together, we are stronger. Together, we return home to innocence. Why would we do this alone? limited to an idea of self that is isolated or singular. We can exceed the sum of our parts. Our shared humanity is stronger than any part of our brain could ever imagine. Let us feel that strength, that desire, that inspiration, so that we can melt the harmful illusions that create suffering on this planet. May we be alive, may we thrive. May we be seen. May we draw from all of our deepest efforts and desires to bring forth that which is truly meaningful. May we continue to learn each day. Remember our innocence, brand new. Each time we forget. May we find the road home in its new incarnation each time that we forget. And may we begin with the template of loving and honoring ourself and our experience in each moment. We start by bringing with deep sincerity, if we can, all of our attention and awareness to the edge of our inhale as we lift and rise. Life enters the body, animates the cells, uniquely you connected to all. Exhale, soften and release the body to surrender to all that which is greater than the mind. Inhale, life returning, animating, fueling us, exhaling, surrender to the wisdom from beyond the mind, the collective web or net of each other. May we offer ourself such love that it radiate and touch all those we encounter. Thank you all. What a wonderful uh, <clears throat> spiritual gathering. I hope I marketed the pastoral care services well today. So you better tell your pastoral care department. <laughs> and I hope I convinced all the participants as well as whoever uh, listening that there is a tremendous potential for pastoral care in strengthening the spiritual care and addressing the religious needs. And I would like to uh, actually thank all the participants all the way from four corners of the world, I should say, because we have one from Israel. So, and all different faiths. And it just makes me so happy to see all of you guys. And um, we are going into the so-called happy holidays season. 
And with that happiness, there is a lot of sorrow and sadness. So I am hoping to maybe we can reconnect in a, in a same platform sometime soon. So I really need your feedback. So please, actually, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to tell some of the people that are helping. Shashi is going to post a feedback on the chat and see if he can actually go in and uh, give us a feedback as to what you want and uh, what difference you want. We would like to do gather another time and maybe more and more time. So I just want you all to know. And I also wanted to especially thank, you know, uh, Ryan, uh, Shashi, uh, Mark, uh, Brenna, uh, Kevin, uh, Louis, and everybody <laughs> for coming uh, together on this platform. And I thank all, especially all the participants that have taken the time, you know, from all your busy schedule. And uh, I would uh, let, uh, you know, Ryan close with this uh, 